Hello and welcome everybody, King Dems here, back at it again. You know what time it is, ESL Pro League Season 15 is over. I'm back from Dusseldorf and so it is time to do a scores on the doors. Uh, if you don't know the drill by now guys, go and check out the other scores on the doors videos. Uh, those of you who are loyal and true fans, let's get into it. This time we're going to go from bottom to top when doing our scores, so we're going to start out with the Aussies looking for Org. Now, obviously looking for Org came rock bottom in their group, didn't get an awful lot done outside of two map wins. However, I'm going to give them a C- minus. to be honest with you. Picking up map wins over Nip and Fnatic is fairly decent for a team that's probably like third best maybe in their region, behind Renegades and Order for sure. Um... <sighs> You can't have that at high expectations, I think, for anybody coming from the Oceanic region over to play in Europe. The level of competition there is just not very high. Renegades absolutely smash everyone in that region, and they really struggle when they come over to Europe. So the expectations have to be pretty low. Um, and they did okay, you know. They didn't do terribly. They were competitive in general. Um, got beaten pretty comfortably on most maps, but they weren't, like, blown out 16 or every game. So, yeah, C- minus for them. It's not bad. It's fine. By the way, we're not going to talk too much about the teams outside of the playoffs. Once I get up to Fnatic, the 9th to 12th place teams and up, we'll talk a little bit more in depth. Next up is Sprout, and I'll be honest, being in the group of death is pretty rough for them. Uh, again, the expectations probably weren't that high coming into things. If they'd been in a weaker group, maybe there was a series that they could take, but honestly... Having seen what we saw in the playoffs, it's obviously pretty apparent that all of the teams in Group B were pretty good. So, again, I'm going to give Sprout a C-. minus. They probably would have liked to have taken more than just two maps, but actually they were pretty competitive. A lot of the maps were a bit closer. So, yeah, C-. minus. It's about in line with expectations. Maybe they would have hoped to get, like, one more map. Next up, we obviously have Party Astronauts. And, uh, yeah... I don't know, C- minus again, like, they probably would have been hoping to do a bit better, but honestly, again, it's similar to the looking for org situation, any teams that come over from NA who are outside of Complexity, EG, and Liquid are probably not going to get anything done and get banged out, it was like that for Party Astronauts, a couple of close maps, only took one home, which is why I'm giving them a C-, minus. they probably would have liked to at least take one or two. Their group also wasn't the strongest, they were in probably on balance the weakest group, so I think they would have been expecting to do better, but yeah, C-, minus. don't expect much from these NA teams outside of, like I say, EG, Complexity and Liquid, and even then EG, it's, it's iffy, it's shaky. Speaking of, next up we have EG, and yeah, I've got to give them an E for this one. Only picking up one map in a group that was not particularly strong is fairly shocking. By and large, they weren't that competitive either. The fact that they got 2 0 by a go is just kind of an indicator of where they're at right now. A tier 3 European team quite comfortably put them to bed. Yeah, absolutely nothing of note to talk about here from Evil Geniuses. Really losing a lot of faith in this lineup they've put together. It doesn't look like they're going to do anything of note with this lineup at all. Pretty bad. Next up, we have Godsent, the first team outside of the dead bottoms. And yeah, I think for Godsent here, you have to give them... I'm going to give them a D-. minus. I think this is a... Not a complete failure, but pretty disappointing. Going into this group, which was one of the weakest groups, well, it was the weakest group, they would have really been thinking that they had a good shot of taking that third place spot at the very least, probably behind Liquid and players. That uh, that would have been the predictions, I think, in their minds when they came in. Uh, the fact that they 2-0 party astronauts, not really much to write home about. Godsend proved when they were playing in NA that they were kind of a cut above that level of competition. Um, but the fact that they weren't really able to to threaten any of the other series particularly is going to be pretty troubling um obviously they've just lost phelps so we've got to adjust expectations a little bit but they have brought in henny who's a very good player yeah not great from godsend i think even with the swapping of phelps for henny they probably would have felt that they should have made a bigger and more serious push for a playoff spot so d minus i think is fair Next up, we have Complexity, and they are also going to get an E from me. Similar to Godsent, except the expectations would have been slightly higher. I think Complexity would have been looking at this group and thinking we seriously could take the third playoff spot off of Astralis. Looking at this group beforehand, it seemed pretty obvious Na'Vi and Heroic would top the group. 
the fact that they didn't again really even get close to it losing to a go again a tier three european team is just not good enough they did get a map off australis so i think that stops it being a complete failure in my eyes and they beat eg but Beating EG would have been the bare minimum expectation. And honestly, beating a go probably would have also been the bare minimum expectation. The fact that they didn't do that, yeah, I think an E is fair. Wasn't great from complexity again on another European showing. I think they are improving a little bit each time I see them. But I don't know if it's at a rate where I feel like they're going to be able to do anything of note this year. Again, another NA team disappointing. Yeah. Next up, we have G2, and they barely, barely, barely scrape not getting an F. Uh, I'm going to give them an E- minus because, yes, they did have Alexi missing, but despite that, with the group they had that featured Fnatic and looking for Org, they should have automatically been finishing in fourth, even with Alexi missing. The fact that they dropped the series to Mouse 2-0 is, is incredibly disappointing. They weren't really even close in that one. And also the fact that they lost to Fnatic with Pepsor and Banjo, yeah, just really not good enough super disappointed from g2 they do do this from time to time um with this core it, it's kind of a, a trademark of this core to be honest to just they pick a tournament they go missing they pick a series they go missing they pick a half they collapse it just happens with this g2 core they'll just randomly collapse at a certain point um yeah just kind of crap not good Next up is Outsiders, and I'm going to give them a D+. Um, obviously, there are external circumstances affecting Outsiders at the moment with the situation going on in Ukraine and the CIS region in general. So I do give a little bit of leeway to those CIS teams when I'm thinking about and discussing their performance. However, I think they would have hoped to be a little bit more competitive in this group. 2-1 against Sprout is not great. Dropping a map to Sprout, they probably would be expecting to 2-0 that series, but eh. And I also think with the form Vitality are in, Vitality are there for the taking, but I don't know. It's quite, I think that's the most disappointing thing, and that's what makes me give Outsiders the score that I'm giving them, is they could have actually made some sort of challenge for that final spot in the playoffs if they'd have beaten Vitality. And the fact that they kind of just went down with a bit of a whimper, especially a Vitality team that I think are there for the taking and had nothing to play for, that's really disappointing. And that's basically what gets them the score that I've given them. Next up, obviously, we have Maus. Now, I think the key series here was obviously that loss to Fnatic. That one is really, really disappointing and not good enough. They should have been beating a team with Pepsor and Banjo. I know Fnatic ended up squeaking their way through to the playoffs, so you could in retrospect look and say maybe Fnatic were a bit stronger than we thought but I don't think so I think teams let them off in this group and allowed Fnatic to get through rather than Fnatic like punching their way through with amazing performances and yeah in this instance Mao's really disappointed I think with that one two loss I'm gonna give them a D they should have definitely fought harder for that third playoff spot um, and the fact they didn't especially with G2 giving them a 2-0 win and G2 basically giving up one of the playoff spots Mao's really should have taken that last playoff spot so yeah a d for mouse wasn't great but at least the series against nip was close they did beat g2 they did beat looking for all it wasn't a complete disaster but i think that result against Fnatic is is really poor and pushes it down from like a c minus d plus to a to a d it was just a d not great Next up is Vitality, and honestly, by the high standards that Vitality are having for themselves, this was pretty poor, pretty comfortably put to bed by Ents and FaZe, and then the Furious series was relatively close, which is why I'm going to give them a C... No, a D plus. C minus would suggest they just slipped under expectations, which I don't think they did. I think... Even if they had beaten Furia, it still would have put them in like a real battle whether they would have actually gotten the third playoff spot or not. Whereas I think even in the group of death, this Vitality team, based sheerly on expectation and the quality of roster that they supposedly have, they should be taking one of the top two spots in this group. I'm going to give them a D+. Plus. It wasn't like terrible. They were competitive in that Furia series. They took down Outsiders and Sprouts, so it, it wasn't as if they were miles away from qualification, but... When you've got Zero on your team, when you've got multiple major winners on your team, when you put together this team under the fanfare of we're going to win a major, yeah, three or four months into the lineup, it's got to be looking better than this, guys. Next up is Big. Now, what are we saying for Big? They beat Party Astronauts, they beat Godsent, they 2-0'd them. It's what they would have been expecting. 
I think the Movistar series is probably where you're expecting to do better, but actually Movistar turned up and were really good at this event. I'm going to give Bigger C minus. They didn't make it out of playoffs. In a weak group, they probably were hoping to make it out of playoffs and to at least be more competitive for that third playoff spot because ultimately by the last game, they were never going to be able to get it. But um, yeah, maybe they should have been closer against Liquid as well. I think a C- minus is fair enough for where Big are at. They've changed basically two players in recent time. They're still trying to find their feet. We don't know where the ceiling is yet. So I'm going to let Big off on this one. C-, minus. I think it's fine. It's, it's whatever. A little bit disappointing that maybe they weren't a bit more competitive for that third playoff spot. Next up, we have a go, and I'm actually going to give them a B-. minus. I know that seems pretty high for a team that finished this low in the standings, but actually, they did pretty well. They kind of got banged out in some of the series against the better teams, but the fact that they beat Complexity and beat Evil Geniuses 2-0... Yeah, I think that's pretty solid for the group. And they showed a lot of promise as well. The two youngsters, Milky and Ultimate, definitely had rounds where they looked promising. A go structurally looked like a decent team. And obviously, Fiku had that absolutely monster series. Was it against Complexity? It was, wasn't it? Nope, I just checked and I was misremembering it. It actually was against Evil Geniuses that he had a monster series and a monster map in particular. Yeah, I thought Ago actually looked quite promising in some of these games. Yes, I think the series against bigger tier one European opposition, if anything, they looked a bit starstruck, if I'm honest. The fact that they were so comfortably better than Evil Geniuses and actually in that complexity series with the deserved winners there as well, it made me feel like their showings against Astralis, Heroic and Na'Vi were more about being starstruck and maybe giving those teams a bit too much respect than it was them getting outclassed to the level that the scoreline showed. So I was actually pretty pretty promised by this ago showing um or pretty enthusiastic should i say about this ago showing whether they'll actually carry it on and do anything else judging by the results that they've kind of had in and around tier two and three i don't know but yeah this was pretty good i'm, I'm gonna give them a b minus i thought it was it was pretty solid especially considering the expectations remember uh, these scores are based as well on the expectations coming in and i expected a go to probably be bottom of this group with evil geniuses so the fact that they weren't the fact that they comfortably beat the two na teams not bad now we have some more interesting and in-depth things to talk about fanatic i am giving a b plus with the lineup that they walked into this ESL Pro League with Pepsor and Banjo. They probably should have only been above looking for Org in their group based on pre-group expectations. Obviously, they are still moving forward with Pepsor in the lineup. So they obviously see something in Pepsor that gives them hope that he can continue to contribute to the team moving forward. Whether in six months' time we'll see Pepsor in the lineup, that remains to be seen. I'll be honest, I doubt it. But just the whole roster shuffle madness mania, Crims also being missing for the group stage, obviously losing their best player in Broland, kicking Smooya not too long before. Yeah, basically just an absolute mess, their roster all over the place. And the fact that they got out of this group is a massive testament, uh, to be honest, I think to Alex as an in-game leader. Obviously, we saw some big series from Poison, and obviously, we saw some big impact from Mezzi. And honestly, Banjo and Pepso, the two youngsters, Pepso? Pepzor. They did pretty well. They did what they needed to do in order to not be dead weights and to help get their team over the line into the playoffs. Uh, obviously, once we got to playoffs, they got banged out to O by uh, Ents pretty convincingly. This series wasn't even very close. Uh, Poison had an absolute shocker in this series, which is totally absent. No impact on the AWP. And probably the big reason they didn't really make this competitive was the fact Poison just absolutely shat the bed and didn't do anything. Um, so yeah, getting to playoffs was an absolute humongous overachievement and anything more than that would have been like out of this world for Fnatic with the state that they're in. So yeah, they get positive marks, good marks for even making it out of the group. That was a massive achievement in of itself for this Fnatic team. Moving forwards, I don't know how I feel about this Fnatic lineup exactly. I still feel like Pepsor... No offense to the guy, but I'm not sure that he's good enough for tier one. And I think you probably have to be looking to replace Pepsor with somebody if this lineup is going to be competitive at a top 15, let's say, Mark. Maybe they can be a top 20 team with Pepsor, but I think if they want to push into top 15 and start threatening the top 10, probably this five-man lineup isn't going to do it. 
even if they did replace Pepsor, I'm not sure how the personalities and stuff are going to mesh on this lineup. At least Poison seems like a little bit more reserved of a guy. Mezzi seems a bit more reserved, but I, I don't know. With Poison's um, supposed motivation issues towards the ends of complexity, if this Fnatic lineup doesn't hit the ground running, I don't know. And Alex has clashed with people in the past. He clashed with MBK on Vitality. So, yeah, I'm not sure about this Fnatic lineup going forward, but this performance here was definitely a good one. Well done, Fnatic, for getting out of the groups. Oh, and also, just as a quick point, looking at the group, they didn't have a trash group either. Nip, Entropic, Maus, and G2 are all competitive sides. Obviously, it turned out that G2 ended up shitting the bed a little bit, but yeah, not bad. Next up, we have Heroic, and I'm going to give them... I think I have to give them a C minus. They did the business in groups that they needed to do. If we go down here, this was their group record. They 2 0'd the three teams you would expect them to 2 0. They 2 1'd the team you would probably expect them to have a closer series against, but win. And then they lost 2 0 to the team that you probably expected them to lose to. Maybe a little bit disappointed that they weren't more competitive with Navi. And this Astralis series was so effing close there was one very important clutch i can't even remember who it was that performed the clutch but there was i think it was shush there was a very important clutch from shush in this series which basically turned it around when stralis were, were on to win the series so yeah it wasn't like the cleanest marching through the group stages that heroic maybe would have liked but it was fine and it was enough even if they lost this astralis series they still would have gone through so not a big concern there but come playoffs, they got spanked by not a tough playoff draw in the form of Liquid. They got spanked 2-0 really convincingly. Did not play up to their level from the group stages or the level that we know we can expect from Heroic at times. So that's why I think... I think quarterfinals, I would have given Heroic a C, particularly depending on the manner in which they lost in the quarterfinals. But I think only making the first round of the playoffs is a little bit below expectations for heroic and particularly the fact they lost to liquid cements that c minus score there is something wrong with this heroic team when it gets to important crunch games they have repeatedly ever since that last epl win shown an inability to win the important games particularly on LAN. ever since we've gone back to lands even without stadiums they seemingly struggle in the important games the pressure gets to them they are a relatively young group of players and obviously relying a lot on Kadian for leadership. I sometimes wonder if Kadian's very high adrenaline, high octane presence is not necessarily the best for this group of players. Maybe they need to just rein in a little bit, be a bit more level, a little bit less emotional during series. I think that might help them. Who knows, could be talking out of my ass here, this is just speculation, but either way, Heroic did just collapse in that Liquid series, and it's hard to analyse their gameplay, because it was so out of character, it wasn't the baseline Heroic, it was uh, a bit of an aberration, so yeah, C-, minus. Little bit disappointing, not really a disaster, I hope to see Heroic bounce back, the thing I am looking for is can they get over this hump they seem to have about just completely collapsing and not even being competitive in the important games. They they just pick an important game in playoffs to be like, yeah, we're going to go now and just not turn up on the server. So, yeah, I, that's what I'm looking for from Heroic in future. I fear this five-man lineup isn't going to get over that. Next up, we have Entropic. Obviously, had a great group stage, only dropping a series to Nip, and only outside of that, dropping a map to G2. And by this point, G2 had gotten their full lineup back together. So it was a pretty good performance, all things considered, in the group stage from Heroic, uh, Entropic, and a very, very, very close series to Astralis. I'm going to give them a C plus because I think Entropic actually played some really good CS and were very competitive. And maybe with a different playoff draw, they would have made it to the quarterfinals. C, a general score of C, like the letter being C, says they about hit expectations. I'm giving them the plus because I think some of the CS they played was very good. I just think Entropic have a, a trouble with being consistent against the highest tier of opposition. Once you get to sort of top 15, top 10, 
and Tropic go from beating everyone. I think they basically beat everyone outside the top 20 pretty comfortably. And even those teams in and around the top 20, I think a Tropic are better than. It's once you get to sort of the top 10 kind of area where they start struggling for consistency in those series. And I think a big portion of that is Elian. Elian is so key when they're smashing tier 2 teams. He farms stats against those guys. He really does struggle to have anywhere near the same level of impact against tier 1 opposition. I think he is the guy they need to figure out how to unlock him against tier 1. And then Entropic will kick on and step up and be, I think, an even bigger threat to go deeper in tournaments. So not bad from Entropic at all. C plus for sure. Um, let's find a way of unlocking Elian and get him to bang out more regularly against the best tier of opposition. And that's when we'll start to see Entropic, I think, uh, improving and maybe even pressing to be like a top five team. Because they really do, I think, have the pieces and they're so consistent across the lineup. And I like the way play they play CS. And with Hooch behind you, anything is possible. Oh, the other thing I want to say is it does occasionally look like they suffer from a vacuum in, in leadership in game in, in very close series. I think they... Nickelback is their IGL. I don't think he is an IGL anywhere near the level of like a Carrigan or a top IGL in the scene. I think he's there to fulfill the role because nobody else will do it. Um, so yeah, I, I think they need to get better with their calling on the server in those tight games. If Nickelback can like improve a little bit with his calling, if Elian can improve a little bit with his consistency, I, I feel really positive about Entropic moving forwards. That is for sure. We have in our... Final, ninth to 12th position, we have players who obviously kind of cruised through the group. No problems. They had a very weak group. Lost to Movistar, but Movistar were obviously the outlying performers of the group. Went 5-0. Really good performance from them. So we won't knock players too much for not winning that. Come playoffs, players had an absolute shit draw. They had by far the hardest side of the bracket. And they had by far the hardest opening playoff game against FaZe. I think they will probably be disappointed that they weren't more competitive. They obviously traded stompings on Inferno and Mirage, but then come overpass players weren't really in that series. And I was in the studio during that series and players kind of mental boomed towards the end of overpass, particularly Nafani was looking really frustrated towards the back end of overpass. A lot of suckers, a lot of bliets. Um, and yeah, he was just looking very, very done mentally by the end of that series. I think we have to give them a D plus. I think they should be at minimum making quarterfinals with the strength of this lineup. But they get the plus and they get a bit more benefit of the doubt, I think, because it was phase that they had in the opening series. And uh, they didn't play badly as a team. Like, Shira and Axile were good performers. The team kind of, like, structurally looked the right way. It was just that overpass, really, against FaZe was disappointing that they weren't more competitive. And disappointing that a lot of the reason was because their mental um, strength, I think, just went towards the end of that series, which is a disappointing way to lose a series, if I'm perfectly honest. Moving forward, I'm not sure what to expect from uh, players. I think they've been like a bit all over the place this year. Very good against Fun, uh, Fun Spark, and you know, in the tournament since they've kind of underwhelmed a little bit. Um, I'm not sure what to think of them at the moment. Obviously, there is a situation going on in Russia, uh, in Ukraine. Sorry, at the moment, which is going to affect these players. They're Russian. They're from that region. There's going to be some weirdness happening behind the scenes. Um, and the fact that they're not allowed to play for their org again is is going to affect them. So D plus, I could give them a C minus and give them the benefit of the doubt. But I think for me, a C score is like you've at the very least met that met, you've at the very least met that bare minimum expectation. I don't think players met that bare minimum expectation. And then the plus is because the circumstances they did it in, it was somewhat understandable. Now we're getting into the 8th to 5th to 5th to 8th, however you want to say it, region. And this is where teams are going to start getting some more positive scores in general from me because these are the good performers. These are the quarter finalists. And obviously we're kicking off with Liquid. Liquid are getting a B plus from me. I think they performed very, very well in the CSL Pro League. Yes, they probably had the weakest group. They got the business done that they needed to. That player series, it was irrelevant. It was by the back end of the groups where they'd already secured themselves a place in the next stage, realistically. So, um, yeah, they 2 owed the teams they were supposed to 2-0. They lost to the teams that maybe they were supposed to lose to in the manner that you would expect. Movistar, closer. 1-2, got a map. Players, not so close. Got 2-0, got banged out pretty convincingly. 
Come playoffs, obviously a lot of credit to Liquid for 2 0 Heroic comfortably in the way they did. Yes, Heroic did not play up to their best standard, but Liquid had to be on point to punish it as well as they did, and they really did. It was a very comfortable series, so all credit to Liquid. And then this NIP series was very, very, very close. I think OC underwhelmed a little bit in this series. Understandable. He's a new player, hasn't played huge amounts of tier one LAN, so especially not in Europe. I think if OC is a little bit more impactful and a little bit better overall in this series, then honestly, it could have really gone either way. The fact that they ran Nips so close, I think, is a positive for Liquid. And yeah, just in general, I think they exceeded expectations by making the quarterfinals. Honestly, Liquid haven't had the best start to the year, but they seem to be growing into things and improving a lot at the moment. So I'm actually quite optimistic about Liquid moving forward. I really was not sold on any of the NA teams at the start of this year, and they kind of were just proving my point um, at the start of the year. All of them were performing pretty doo-doo. But now I'm actually feeling a bit better, even about complexity, to be honest, but definitely Liquid. I'm feeling a lot better about Liquid. So yeah, B plus for this one. I think this was a solid showing and a decent run. And I'm looking forward to see more of them going forwards. I think they were uh, looking pretty decent. The one thing with Liquid, I would like them, particularly on their CT side, they play too standard. They get caught in this trap of playing like absolute textbook CS. And in a meta of gamble stacks... I think in a meta where some of these maps are, you can put up really huge CT halves if you're willing to take a few risks. I think Liquid need to embrace that a little bit more. I think they need to get out of their comfort zone of playing absolute textbook CS every time. I know that you might think, oh, textbook CS, that, that's the way you're supposed to play, isn't it? I think even players, a Gambit, are now starting to show there are... I think limits on your team if you play two textbook you need to be willing to take risks at the right moments you need to be willing to rotate quickly in certain situations liquid are so slow at rotating on ct side sometimes and also just stack a site sometimes in, if you're in a disadvantaged situation stack a site you, you can't split you know two two in a 5v4 all the time and expect to convert many of those rounds you have to take some risks sometimes and liquid don't seem willing to do that and i think that's what would elevate them if they just Every now and then took a, a little bit more risks. I think they'd I think they'd be a better team. I really, really do. Next up we have Astralis. Uh Astralis, I think they get a B a B. I think they squeaked through this group again largely because there were three not so great teams that they got to play. The complexity series was a little bit closer than maybe they would have liked. Come playoffs. Very tight game against Entropic, but they did well to get through it, and they got over the line. And then against Furia, yeah, they won the Ancient, but after that, they weren't really competitive on the other two maps, and Furia were comfortably the better team in this series. So I can't give Astralis uh, anything better than I think it'd be, but with how bad Astralis have been so far this year and the fact they just made a player change, I think this quarterfinals run exceeded expectations in the manner of it. The fact that they did take a map off Fury in the quarterfinals were definitely in that series at least. Yeah, I think it's a good performance. I think I'm excited to see how Astralis move forward with Farley in the lineup. He seems like a great kid with a good head on his shoulders. I just don't want Astralis to fall in this trap that I think they have done pretty much ever since Device left. Of They kind of leave the fourth player out to dry and don't give him any chance to have any impact. I think Zip and Glaive need to be the absolute supportive element of the core and need to just be willing to give up stats completely in order to help the others shine. And Farley should probably at least be that middleman behind BlameF and Config. They're not really getting him the AWP on T-Side a lot, whether that's his fault, like he said in, in, in an interview he did with me or not. I think your team can be more willing to play around getting you the AWP out, let's say that. So, um... I reserve a little bit of judgment on Astralis moving forward. I want to see what they do with Farley, but this was a pretty decent showing, I think, at EPL, all things considered. Uh, a fifth to eighth again for Movistar. I think we got to give them a B. They exceeded expectations by kind of bombing through the group. All of the series were actually... They never really blew anyone out in any series, but they did win them all, which is, is important. Like, if you look at the top 
teams. They had the worst round difference, and they had a worse round difference than players and Liquid, who finished below them in the group, which shows you how close, in general, the Movistar series were. But they were getting over the line, and then they skipped straight through to the quarterfinal. Uh, I think... <laughs> This is, is really disappointing. Yes, there were some close rounds on this Vertigo and Nuke. The 16-2 and 16-5 scores are probably a little bit generous towards Ents, particularly on Vertigo. Um, Hades and Dika had some huge clutches, like some 2v4s, 2v3s that really pulled Ents through. Uh, and then same on Nuke. There were a few rounds that could have gone either way to make the score lines a little bit closer. Either way, I do think they were confident and comfortable maps for Ents. So... Yeah, I think they'll be disappointed with their quarterfinals performance, but I think just the way that they kind of comfortably put their group to bed and a B- minus is probably fairer. I think the fact that they weren't all that close in this quarterfinal did take a map at least. So yeah, B-, minus. they ex exceeded expectation. They, I think, reminded people that they're not like a, 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 a foregone conclusion to just bomb out of groups and stuff. Like this team has shown some promise at various points. I am full, for example, last year. I'm not sure if Movistar are ever going to quite be enough to be like a really consistent top 15 team. I think they're probably a roster move away. Davy G and Deaths kind of do just drag the team down on certain maps and in certain situations. So maybe one of them might need to go. I don't know, though. Maybe they can still improve this five-man lineup. I'll leave it to them to figure it out. But yeah, not a bad performance at all in this tournament. I'm going to give them a B-. minus. And the final fifth to eighth team, Na'Vi. They obviously did exactly what they needed to do in groups. Only dropped a map to Astralis. Generally looked comfortable and much better than any team they've faced in all of those series. And then they got pretty comfortably put to bed 2-0 by FaZe. Faze are probably the best team in the world right now. I think it's pretty hard to argue against that. So with that context in mind, I think we can give Na'Vi... They didn't probably meet expectations. I think expectations for this Na'Vi team, with all of the things considered, everything put into context with what's going on right now, um, and considering their performances so far this year, probably semis would have been the expectation for Na'Vi, but... The fact that they ended up in such a tough bracket and had to play FaZe in their first game, I'm going to give them just a C. I, I think with the context that FaZe were the first team they played in the quarters, yeah, a C. I think the expectations suddenly you have to lower them because if they'd have played like... If the bracket had been more sensible and based less on group performance and more on like overall seeding... They wouldn't have played FaZe. I think they would have made the semi-finals. I think FaZe were the only team in this tournament that would have comfortably 2 0 them like they did. So yeah, I'll give Navi a C. There's obviously stuff going on at the moment in um, the homeland of a lot of the Navi players. So yeah, it's rough times, I think, for Navi. And, um, you know, it's a shame that I think their era, or their chance at an era at least, if you don't believe they had one, kind of got knocked on its head by circumstances out of their control. I think that's kind of tragic uh, and is going to be a bit of a, a sad footnote in the pages of Counter-Strike history. Now we are on to our top four teams, starting with Furia, who comfortably marched through the toughest group in the whole of ESL Pro League, to be honest. There was no group that was even vaguely close. Three strong teams. Yeah, this group, most people would have only said players with a really strong team in it. A couple of strong teams, a couple of like decent teams. So yeah, they had by far the um, the strongest group. Like basically, I think before this, everyone would have said all five of these teams were like decent to strong. Only Sprout were the only ones really who were like bottom feeders of the group. Uh, and then Furia comfortably put Astralis to bed. So I think Furia definitely um, made a case of being a strong team this year. I'm going to give them a B plus. I think they exceeded expectations. I think if they'd have been a little bit... They were quite close in that phase series. I'm remembering that phase series as not being as close as it actually was. But the thing is, I think the score lines are a little bit misleading because on both maps phase, once they settled into it, went on mad streaks to end the map like they went on some crazy streak on ct to end inferno and they won like 11 of the last 14 rounds on mirage so once phase got going in these series they never actually looked like losing them 
I feel like the score lines are just a little bit generous to Furia, just a little bit, not a whole lot, but but. So yeah, I'm gonna stick with B plus, almost squeaking an A minus from me, but it was a good performance from Furia, and if they can keep improving with safe and dropping the lineup, then Furia could definitely be a dangerous team for sure come the major. So keep an eye on these boys. But yeah, I think I think a B plus is probably fair. It's probably fair. Obviously, the other team we have is Nip. They're just getting an A minus. Um, with Fuzi in the lineup, this Nip team should be nowhere. They should be trash. Even with Rez performing much better this year, he's having a really good year um compared to to like previous years overall um obviously a bit disappointing in this semi-final but ents were like reasonably comfortable in this one um as you can see res was massive against liquid and like some of the group stage res was huge so yeah i think a minus is fair enough just with fuzi in the lineup like fuzi is not good with the orp he actually often looks better on rifles for nip like which is bizarre when he's been brought in to replace device and be an orper um so yeah i think nip have performed right like, really really admirably with with fuzi in the lineup i think they've gone far above and beyond expectations um now that they've got broland moving forward obviously a better player than fuzi but they are basically going to a point where they're gonna have to give the orpers like a secondary to s tag probably because you i don't think you want to give it to res i think you want to let res rifle i don't think you can give it to hampus with the role he has on the team so we're gonna have to look at s tag secondary i don't know i don't think it can be a downgrade on fuzi even if s tag only picks it up like every now and then just to give them that option so yeah i think nip will be good going forward with brolan um where the ceiling is hard to say particularly considering like i say they don't have a primary and orping is very important in this meta so yeah, hard to say, but definitely a good performance here. They're getting an A minus from me. Ah, well done, ninjas in pajamas. Pajamas? Eh? You know what I mean, guys. Good job, Nip. Obviously, that means we have to finish on the top two, with the first being Ents. Ents are getting an A plus. Absolutely stellar run through this tournament. The playoffs, they were comfortable in every single series, obviously, except this grand final. They were pretty confident and comfortable in the group. They actually beat FaZe in the group, who are the best team in the world right now. You know, they obviously put to bed everyone pretty comfortably, except Furia, but they were close in that series. So, yeah, just an amazing performance from Ents. They really are starting to grow into a team that looks really, really dangerous. I don't think Snappy was lying when he said to me in an interview that they have at least four players that can top the scoreboard. And even Snappy just every now and then randomly goes ham. In this nuke game against Movistar Riders, for example, he absolutely... And just look, he had a 1.27 for the series. Like... They're so dangerous. Hades had a really, really good grand final, as did Madden. I think Snap, uh, Spink, sorry, disappointing in this grand final was the big thing that that meant it wasn't closer. Because if you look, FaZe kind of really were like comfortable-ish on the maps that they won. Um, I don't think it would have been any closer on the maps that that they'd won. The score lines are reflective, basically, is what I'm saying. It, it was at least like yes, Ents were competitive, but probably second best on on all the maps they lost um and did well to win overpass actually they did well to kind of squeak a tight game there a lot of a lot of really big hades clutches on overpass though really got them over the line i'm just so impressed with this ends lineup snappy has done really well and has put together a lineup that legitimately at the moment is a top five lineup in the world um i think if you put them against like anybody in a series they're going to be at least competitive yeah, really excited for this Ents lineup going forward. Um, and I think the only way is up for them right now. They've still got such a young and relatively inexperienced uh, Tier 1 and particularly a LAN lineup. So, yeah, they're aggressive. They're exciting to watch. They're dynamic. I love watching Ents. I really hope they continue to do well. And I hope to continue seeing them go deep in tournaments because they just play interesting CS and they make for good games. So, yeah, A-plus for Ents. Absolute banger performance. If they'd have won the tournament, 100% would have got a very rare S from me. And now we come to FaZe. I think FaZe get an A. They did exactly what they needed to do. They bombed through the hardest side of the bracket. They, they did drop a map against players, but still comfortable in that series. So, And again, they dropped a map against FaZe at Ents, but still comfortable in this series. The reason they don't get an A plus or an S is just because I think, unfortunately, the only really legit opposition they ended up facing 
they did face players in the opening round, which is a toughie, but as we said, players are a bit all over the place at the moment. They did play Na'Vi, and they did show that they are definitely the better team, but again, Na'Vi have the asterisk. No asterisks here. They played against a good Furia team and did exactly what they needed to do. And no asterisks here. They played against a good Ents team. And, and yeah, they did exactly what they needed to do. They showed that right now they are the best team in the world. What stops them getting like maybe an A plus or an S is like I say, lack of really, really like getting tested, especially in the playoff series. And the fact that they went 0-2 to start off the group. Um, this was a bit of a shaky and slow start. Obviously, they just incorporated Rain back into the lineup, but it genuinely did threaten their ESL Pro League campaign before it even really got going. So that's the only the only two reasons. And the second one is like not as important. Um, they deserve credit, even if anything, for bouncing back from an O2. But those are the reasons that they lose a little bit of their potential score. But it, it was a great tournament run for FaZe. They like I say, they solidified their spot at number one. They proved that Katowice was not a fluke. And Rain in particular proved that he is not done yet. Rain was really good throughout the playoffs. Um, he was good in this Furia. As you can see, he was good in the final. As you can see, 1.08. And he was even good like here. Yeah, he was actually banging against Na'Vi. So, um, hi, Rain. Didn't mean to click on you, but how you doing, bro? Thanks for giving me an interview. I really appreciated it. But that is it, boys and girls. And otherwise, um, hang on, let's scroll up here. Um, if I can, I'm gonna have to zoom out. Uh, is that enough? One more. One more. Fuck it. There's so many teams in there. Um, but I, 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 if I can be bothered, I'll edit and I'll put their scores uh, that I gave them on that little team thing here. Let me know ones that you agreed with, ones that you disagreed with. Am I being too harsh? Am I being too generous? I highly doubt that. I tend to be probably on the harsh side a little bit. And remember, if you did not like it, fuck off.